Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Rajeshwari. I'm a consultant in transfusion medicine. So the first thing is like when we are, when I say transfusion medicine consultant, most of them look at me as though, what exactly is that? Oh, you work in the blood bank. So actually we do much more than just, you know, the blood transfusion. So since we have, uh, just, I'll give you a brief introduction of what really we do. So safety of the blood and blood products is one of the most important thing. You know, the patient, any department, it may be ca casualty or it might be the surgery or medicine. So blood and blood component requirement is an integral part of the patient care. So, you know, the safety of the blood and blood products is one of the most important thing. And, you know, we have to make sure that it is there. So as a transfusion medicine consultant, what do I do? So my work starts from motivating the common people to come forward and donate because we need safe blood. And second thing is, you know, once the blood is donated and safely the preparation and the storage, the quality control and making sure that the blood and blood components goes to the right patient in right dose in right time is my job. And not only that, we also look into various parameters and qualities of the blood. And also, we also look at the, you know, the organ transplant, the cross matching. There is a multiple, multiple tests which is done to make sure that the safety of the blood and blood components is ensured. So we have a blood donors day in the corner. June 14th is the World Donors Day. It's been celebrated since 2005. The question is, why do we even celebrate this? So we will look in detail when I'm presenting what is this and why it is important. But just briefly, you know, the World Donors Day has been celebrated since 2005 across the world. It's a global event. And because the giving blood and saving life is very important and it is an integral part of the patient care. So coming to the World Donors Day, like, you know, every year there is a theme is selected by the WHO and along with the Red Cross. And, you know, the whole year they work for that motto. It's only not to collect the blood in World Donors Day. We also look into creating the awareness, mainly to motivating and also promoting blood donation. So without further delay, I would like to present some of the facts. What is the current scenario in India? Do we have enough blood? Do we have, you know, every patient who comes to the hospital, they're just eyes closed. Will they say I'm accessible to safe blood? Let's just quickly look into what is the current scenario? So there are multiple myths, actually. So the people, even the, not only the uneducated, even the educated are very scared to come forward and donate with the various myths involved. Let's see what are the myths and we will discuss in a scientific way whether it's really valid and what we can do to break this or burst these myths. So I'm going to share my PPT now. Okay. Okay, so the blood is a soul of life. This is known from the ancient time, actually. So the Egyptian took blood bath as a recuperative measure. Look at this. They knew about the, the importance of blood in that days itself. And it is considered as soul of life. And Romans drank the blood. Yes, it sounds gross, but they drank the blood of fallen gladiators in an effort to cure epilepsy and so on and so forth. There is many ceremonies were involved and mainly for spiritual restoration also it is used. This is how the myths around the blood donation and blood transfusion was started. Coming to the blood transfusion per se, in 1492, so early, the first reported blood transfusion has occurred and transfusion was done on Pope Innocent VIII in Rome. So he was dying, his doctor said, since the blood is soul of life, mainly you have to transfuse blood. So they caught hold of 14 to 15 year old boys and three of them and transfused. No scientific facts involved. Unfortunately, all three boys along with the Pope all died. 
if you see the history and the literature you know even at the attempt of transfusion from animal bloods to human also tried and you know it was uh, transfused with the hope that curing violent um, uh, people of their rages by transfusing them with the blood of gentle animals like calves and sheep. Of course, this was a disaster anyway. So when did this modern era of transfusion medicine begin? Carl Landsteiner, who is the one who is a, considered as a father of transfusion medicine, who described ABO blood group in 1901. So what is ABO blood group? depending on the presence of specific protein in the GABA on the red cells, the, the blood groups are considered as either A protein is there, A antigen is there, A group, B is there, B group, both are there, A, B, and none is there, it is O group. So there are four major blood, um, blood groups, A, B, A, B, and O. So the birth anniversary of Carl Landsteiner is celebrated as World Blood Donors Day. This is June 14. As we discussed, Blood Donors Day was organized by first time in 2005 globally. And why do we even do it globally? Because the shortage of blood is not only in the developing countries, it's there in developing countries, or developed countries, as well as in, throughout the world, actually. This is not only just to collect blood, it is mainly to raise awareness about the life-saving uh, procedure. This day is marked to promote blood donation and urge to people to come forward and save lives by donating blood. The event also serves to create awareness of the necessity of safe blood. So what is safe blood? We will discuss a little bit in detail later. So this year theme is donating blood is an act of solidarity. Of course, if the patient comes to the Kaba hospital, there is not one unit can treat. It is, a, it is a holistic approach. We need to go to for the best outcome. So donating blood undoubtedly is an act of solidarity. Let's discuss about the Indian scenario now. See, we have population of 1.4 billion and we have 2,760 blood banks in, our, in India. So what is the uh, amount of your blood which is donated last year? 14.6 million, it's a huge number. However, are we meeting the needs? Is it a demand and supply is equal? Absolutely not. The demand is around 15.5 to 16 million. So why is it so? Because there is an increasing aging population is there. There is many people who couldn't afford medical facility. They are affording. And there is many complicated surgeries which was not done before, which is not tried, is being tried. And there is a guy, you know, the overall the medical facility is, is, is reaching the even the rural population. And that's excellent in one way. However, that also means the demand is also increasing. So there is a deficit of one to one and a half million of blood donation per year. That's a huge number. So why is it so? What is the reason like with the population of 1.4 billion? I mean, we are having only so less donation. Let's look at the trend of blood donation. So. Like, as you can see from 2012 data, I've, uh, from onwards, I put it up. So there, with increasing year, there is an increasing donation. However, it's just not good enough. We need at least 1% of the population, eligible population to come forward and donate. Then only we can meet the demand versus the supply. So let's see in simple terms, actually. So what is the need of blood in India? One unit every two seconds we need. And we need more than 38,000 blood donations per day to meet the demand versus supply. Are we doing enough? Looks like we are not. Let's look at the developed countries and our country. See, in developed countries, the donation rate is at least 50 per thousand eligible population. Where are we standing with all the motivation, awareness, still we are 
So uh, maximum we were reached is 36.5 per thousand eligible population. And there is a deficit of around two to three per thousand. So that makes a huge number when it comes to in terms of millions. So what is the reason? We need to introspect ourselves to see why. why. Why there is so much of difference? And there is so much of advancement in technology and many forms. And why, why there is so much of a you know, deficit in the blood, especially if it is such a simple act and life-saving act, and it is a blood banks are so many are there. So there is various reason actually. So let's start with everybody is like, why do I donate? Is there anybody asked me? No, I didn't know there is a deficit and let somebody else donate it and then we will see. Or can we not buy the blood from the other blood bank? These are the very many questions I listen to this in, in, in many times actually. So the my question is why not today and why not you? This is a couple of studies when we were looking at to trying to understand why, why there is, not, uh, no, there is not much increase in donation. This is the study done in South India and uh, North India. And we realized that 50% or a little more than 50% of them said they didn't have sufficient knowledge on blood donation. And the other reasons for not donating is some said they're very worried about the needle prick and some said but they actually probably after donation, they you know they might become weak for months and years, and you know many other myths. So we thought, I mean, it's very very important that you know we we remove the myths and fill with the facts, so that the donation improves. And definitely, it is a precious act, and it is it ha, it one donation can save as many as five lives. We really don't want to take it from someone who is paid because see the risk of the donors is very uh, risk of, uh, you know, the health of donors is very important. At the same time, the health of patients is equally important. So we do not want to take any blood from any paid donors. When there is a scarcity, then obviously the paid donors comes into play. The blood is not safe. They might hide many factors. It might be risk for them to donate. They might just come and donate. They might donate one blood unit here. And then after three days, they might go and donate somewhere else. This is absolutely risk, not only for them, for us also to take this blood. We want 100% voluntary donors. So who is this voluntary donors? Voluntary non-remunerated donor is a one who comes and donate blood and blood component with free will and receives no payment for it, either in the form of money or in any other kind. So we want to rely of, um, on voluntary donors. So who can donate? Anyone from 18 to 60 years of age can donate. If somebody is donating regularly till the age of 65 years, they can donate. Why 18? because there is a growth spurt occurs, there will be an increase in the demand in the, their body itself. That's why we want to, in the US, they, it starts from 17. And from here in India, we start from 18 years of age. 18th birthday is the time we need to target the youngsters. So these are the various criteria we have put it across, mainly for the safety of the donors. So let's look at what are these. So hemoglobin has to be more than 12.5 or 13 for the blood donation. We do not want donors to become anemic. And weight has to be more than 45 kilos and pulse and blood pressure has to be within the normal range. When I say pulse again is within normal range, it is 50 to 100 per minute and with the regular pains. Blood pressure has to be controlled. Even if they are on medication, it's fine as long as it is controlled. So what are the other things? This is mainly for the safety of the donors. So there are some, uh, some are permanent deferrals like abnormal bleeding tendency, or if they have heart, kidney, liver disorder, or epilepsy or mental disorder, and asthma on treatment or needed a, a admission to the hospital, and previous history of cancer, diabetic on insulin, this is a permanent deferral. This is mainly for the safety of the donor. 
there are very other many other criteria where you will have a temporary deferral that is if they have if you have undergone major surgery or had typhoid in the last one year dog bite and had a rabies injection unexplained blood loss and delivery these are the temporary deferral for one year again there is a various other parameters like you had a minor surgery root canal treatment and malaria and vaccines there are variable temporary criteria which ranges from 3 to 6 months so this is mainly for the safety of the donors okay there is a myth that women cannot donate or they are too weak they are not fit for this is an era of equal uh, rights and equal uh, opportunity so why not in this females definitely can donate and but only they cannot donate during pregnancy after delivery for one year and when lactating apart from that they can definitely donate as long as they meet the criteria so is how much do you share argument uh, with us let's look at how much do you have and how much you can share and what is the safe like volume you can share with us so in your body what is the total amount of blood you we have so if we calculate it's around 70 to 80 ml per kilo body weight and if we calculate according to the weight it is 60 to 70 kilo person it's around 5 to 6 liters so if we calculate in that way we are taking less than 1 tenth of the volume if the like, your weight is between 45 to 55 years then 55 kilos sorry and blood is we collect around 350 ml of blood and if it is more than 55 kilos then we take around 450 ml of blood any blood group is fine again there are myths that my blood group is not a rare blood group so probably it's not needed why should i even donate that's not true and uh, any blood group the blood is a precious thing and it it saves life so the, if we have excess of any of the blood group we will tell you we will take it later we have enough inventory but definitely that should not be the reason not to come forward so there are four types of blood groups depending on the what above protein you have it on your red cells so depending on that they are classified as a group b group if both the antigens are there then ab group and none are there then it is o group again presence of rh antigen depending on that where if it is present then we can call it as rh positive and if the rh protein which is there on the red cell which is not there then we call it as rh negative so one of the one more very myth we i hear very frequently is since you know, i'm b positive anyway b positive is a common blood group so probably you don't need it that's why i'm not donated so that's not true so we will see who can donate to whom so we all know that o negative is a universal donor that means when it, we are specifically talking about the packed cells when you donate your 350 or 450 ml of blood we will separate into components i will show you the picture okay we will i'll show you picture in the later so component this is a red packed cells we are talking about there is no plasma in it so packed cells the we can give o negative to any blood group so o positive again ab positive a positive b positive o positive all these groups can receive and coming to the a negative we can give it to the ab positive or ab negative a positive or a negative blood group individuals and it's like it is the similar to the other blood groups as well so you irrespective of the blood group it is very important you come and donate because it never goes to waste so ab become positive is a gamma you know universal recipient it can receive blood and this individual can receive blood from all the blood groups coming to the question is it safe for the donor to donate yes definitely it is safe for the donor we already discussed this but just a little more on facts so adult individual has 5 to 6 liters as we calculated 70 to 80 ml per kilo body weight 
person can donate three months for males and four months for a females of their duration and donate in this uh, in the, my in this duration so how long the body takes again uh, for this blood to recover blood plasma volume recovers within one to two days and red cells takes around three to four weeks and platelets and white cells takes within few minutes let me tell you one thing the these the normal values of the either the red cells or platelets or white cells never go below the normal values after the donation it will be still within the normal range so not no need to worry so suppose if you have an hemoglobin of 13 or 13.5 it's not going to go below 12.5 it's only maximum it goes down is 12 13.5 to probably 13.2 or 13.3 that is still within normal range one more most frequent uh, this thing is i didn't have time to come and donate so actually let's look at how long it is take uh, it takes for the blood donation to complete see the actual donation time is only 10 minutes However, the entire process takes around 20 to 30 minutes. And I will tell you why. See, we, we, safety of the donor, as I said, it's really important. So what do we do? We, we give the questionnaire for them to read up. Have you, done, have you had surgery? Are you on antibiotic? Are you, do you have any other problems? There is a set of definitive questionnaires are there. So that, you know, the donors who are not fit should not donate. And then we do the mini physical examination that is checking the temperature, pulse, blood pressure, hemoglobin levels, weight, height, etc. Once they pass all this and then they proceed to the donation. The donation per se takes only 8 to 10 minutes and you will be lying down comfortably and the the process total donation process takes only eight to ten minutes after donation we will make sure that you're okay and refreshment is given and after observing for 10 to 15 minutes we will let you go for a normal like um, back to your normal daily activity this is how it looks so First, we will clean the arm, we will identify the vein, clean the arm, aseptic, after aseptically cleaned and then everything is ready, the needle is put in, and then the blood donation. As you can see, the blood is flowing out of the vein and collecting in the bag, which has an anticoagulant. So this is a whole blood. And this is the era of disposable bags and which is very sterile and one time use. And once the whole blood is collected and this is centrifuge in a, in a temperature controlled centrifuge, and then it is separated into fat cells, white cells, platelets. But play, sorry, for fat cells and platelets and plasma. So the red cells is mainly low hemoglobin we want to give it to the patients who have low hemoglobin or bleeding or there is a decreased oxygen because of the very low hemoglobin because we know that red cells carries oxygen platelets is helps in the bleeding disorders if the patient has very low platelets and then bleeding then obviously the platelets are life saving the plasma again has a lot of coagulation factors this is again for the correcting the co coagulation factors, especially in major surgery, bleeding, etc. So how safe is this blood? So in every step, the quality is maintained. The donor identity questionnaire has been filled and checked. And then uh, once the blood is collected, it is centrifuged and separated into components within four to six hours and stored in a temperature, different temperature, so that the maximum efficiency is maintained. And of course, the, through blood, there is some of the transfusion, transmissible infection can you know, transmit. That's the reason we need to have a very high sensitive assays to pick up these infections. As per the government mandate, we will check for HIV 1 and 2, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, syphilis, and malaria. So this is the all the blood bank, whoever collecting, they have to do it. So serology is one type of assay where antigen-antibody reaction is what we look at. 
And there is also a one more test called NAT testing, nucleic acid amplification test. This is an additional layer of safety where the safety of blood has enormously increased. The risk of transfusion is almost come to zero with this gamma NAT testing. So to test, there is, a, is there any infection uh, along with the questionnaire and asking questions? So we do it the serology test as well as the NAT testing. So where all this blood is utilized? So obviously, you know, it is intrauterine transfusion, it can be, or it can be for the newborns, or it can be for the, you know, the cancer patients, accident victims, or anyone with the blood disorders, going through chemotherapy, transplant, so on and so forth. So there is a many, many myths after, you know, the involving the blood donation, and definitely we need to solve, uh, clarify these things because we need blood for to, save, uh, for to save patients, to save many, many patients. And also one donation, 10 minutes of your time saves five lives because we make products and then we use it rationally because it is a very, very precious uh, thing. Blood cannot be manufactured. And if someone donates, it goes to someone. Okay, to some patients. So the guy, suppose the platelets, which is there in your body is so much in excess and actually we don't need it. But if you give it to the patients who doesn't have platelets, either because of chemotherapy or because of accident or infection, et cetera, that can be a life-saving for the patient. So there is a many myths we will go through one by one and okay, you know, we will try to bust these more myths. Giving okay, blood hurts, yes, well, I mean, you might feel pain or probably like an ant bite. So it is just the needle prick. You might feel it for two seconds and after that, absolutely, you are fine. I'm sure this, like, all of you might have donated, given the blood for the blood testing for a second for, while probably doing fever or many things. So it is not more than this. So, and also there is a myth that they, you might contact infection or HIV during the blood or donating blood. That's absolutely not true. You know, we, we take 100% safety precaution and all the disposable, like, uh, you know, the needles, one time you uh, use needles are used and there is no way you can contract either any of the infections through blood donation. Is it time consuming? Already you know it takes only 10 minutes and the whole process takes probably around 20 to 30 minutes. Is the age is deterrent for blood donation? Of course not. You know till 60 you can donate and if you're a regular donor till 65. Can women donate? Of course. This is an interesting uh, myth. But, you know, if you smoke, you cannot be a blood donor. I guess uh, I, I'll tell you, please stop smoking. This is really dangerous. But in case, if he continues to smoke, then uh, please refrain from smoking just half an hour before the Gagwar donation because that will increase your blood pressure. And two, three hours after the blood donation because you might feel a dizziness uh, occasionally if you smoke. So otherwise, even if you smoke, that's okay. You can come and donate. I'm diabetic, I cannot donate. That's not true. If you are diabetic on insulin, then only you cannot donate. That too, because of the safety of the donors. And But if you are a diabetic on medication and sugar is controlled, that's absolutely not, an, not a, a contraindication for donation. Person with a blood pressure, can they donate? A high blood pressure? Yes, as long as your blood pressure is controlled and the systolic blood pressure is less than 150 and diastolic is less than 100. People with seasonal allergies, do they qualify donating blood? Of course, they can donate and not at all a contraindication for donation. So what do we expect from the public? Make blood donation as a habit. And if the parents are doing, the kids automatically follow. Donate regularly. It's good for you every four months or on, especially on the special days like uh, birthdays, anniversaries, etc. 
motivate others, form groups. And, uh, you know, the, once there is like a recognition, I mean, obviously, if you form a group and then somebody who's kind of, you know, donating more frequently, there will be more re recognition and more challenges. So please come forward and help us to save lives. This is a wonderful gift of life. And you can easily do it with just 30 minutes of your time. So what is advantage for you? See, it improves your cardiovascular health. Studies have clearly shown somebody who's coming and donating regularly, it's not only saves lives, it also improves your cardiovascular health. It reduces chance of heart attack. And also you're getting a mini physical examination whenever you come on donating blood. Lowers the risk of stroke, it enhances production of new blood cells. And it also were known to uh, shown that it lowers the risk of cancer. So definitely there is a lot of benefit for the donor. And of course, it's a life saving for the patients. So please do come forward and donate. 